Fuck you, and good morning, and welcome to the second episode of Pardon the Vulgarity, or PTV, the show that sounds like a venereal disease, but isn't. Starting right off, I'll go over the format that this is going to take on real quick. Um, I don't think anybody wants to see me ramble for 20 goddamn minutes. I don't want to see myself ramble for 20 goddamn minutes, and I love myself, so... uh, What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick five to ten topics, uh, try and spend 30 seconds to a minute each on them, hopefully uh, bang out, a little bang, bang out shows uh, in five or six minutes and uh, give you at least something decent to listen to and on the off chance that you think I'm incredibly attractive, something decent to watch as well. So, moving right along, uh, the topic of the week is Daniel Ochara and his... uh, WWF move on Max Pacioretty into the turnbuckle. Uh, I will post a video of that in the century below so you can watch it. And there's a pretty even split. Uh, some people think that Char did it on purpose. Some people think that he either lost track of where he was or he got caught up in playing hard. And wow. I watched it probably uh, about a dozen times by now and I think that if you don't think that Char was doing it on purpose you are retarded uh, first of all Char hit Patch ready late second of all he was looking at the turnbuckle third of all this man is an exceptionally talented professional athlete there is no way in hell he lost track of where he was on the ice uh, he knew where he was, he knew what he was doing, he was looking right at the goddamn turnbuckle, and the hit was late. So, I think when you add all those together, it's it's pretty clear that Zidane Chara meant to run Pacioretty into the turnbuckle. Uh, I don't think he intended to break Pacioretty's neck or Edel's brain, um, but I think it was another instance of, of a Bruin player seeing a borderline hit they can make and taking advantage of it for the sake of earning a toughness reputation and maybe doing a little damage to the other team. Um, That's just how they play. And uh, unfortunately, Chara did not receive any discipline from the NHL for the hit. Uh, It was uh, deemed, I think, just a hockey play, uh, a bang-bang play, and uh, that's just how discipline goes in the NHL, I guess. Last night, Martin St. Louis of Tampa Bay Lightning completed a pretty sweet spinorama move, uh, I believe, to win in the shootout against whoever the hell they were playing. Uh, I watched it. I'll post that video as well, in addition to the other one I'm going to talk about by uh, Linus Omark, uh, who also pulled a, a spinorama, uh, this one against the Lightning. And uh, yes, it's the Battle of the Spinorama Douchebags. You get the little Oompa Loompa and the Euro trash. Um, Pat Malacaro and Jeremy White of WGR are kind of joking about uh, where's the Lightning's indignation on San Luis Spinorama uh, since they were the ones bitching about Omar disrespecting the game and being too showy and all that crap. And uh, I mean, obviously, the difference here is that Omar's a European player. Uh, maybe guys from Europe and Russia have a stereotype for being a little flashy and not growing up with the game the same way that uh, North American players do. I've certainly seen plenty of fire directed towards Alexander Ovechkin, and I think that's stupid. I, I think it's, it's moronic, and I think it needs to stop. I am sick of this good old Canadian boy stereotype of hockey and all these old fat fucktards that think that the game should be played a certain way, and you should let them play, and you need to respect the game, and all that nonsense. Uh, have you looked at how hockey's doing in this country? Uh, maybe harping on players that are actually entertaining isn't the brightest move. Uh, Omar, uh, Omar is awesome to watch. He is one of the most entertaining players uh, in the shootout, and you know if he continues to develop, could be one of the most entertaining players in the NHL. I I love the guy for it. I love European players. I like that there's a new perspective coming into the game. And I think that that old guard needs to get on board because it's going to happen. Sorry, Don Cherry. There's going to be Europeans. Alexander Ovechkin's going to celebrate goals. Elias Omar's 
I'm going to spin and make Dan Ellis look like a retard. Sorry. One minute. Great. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes, talking to Phil over at BBG about this. Uh, Hurricanes, competing for a playoff spot, actually tied for eighth in points, aren't a good team. Uh, I looked at the stats, and this is in the conference, so this is out of 15 teams. They're fifth in goals four per game. They're 11th in goals allowed per game as of Sunday. They're ninth in the power play, 13th in the penalty kill, 12th in uh, points percentage of one goal games. They're not good at anything. How are they competing? They can score, kinda. Can't defend. Can't play special teams. Can't win clutch games. What the hell? Uh, answer for that, of course, is that they play in the uh, Special Olympics division in the NHL. Uh, they got the likes of Atlanta and Tampa Bay and Washington and Florida. Uh, a total of 24 times a year, and that adds up. Uh, they are, they have a pretty good record uh, within their division. It was uh, something like 14-8 uh, and whatever, and uh, they have a losing record against the rest of the East, so, um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, 2011 Carolina Hurricanes. Sabres March schedule. Uh, I made a comment about this in my podcast the other day. Uh, it's not hard. There's 11 games. Uh, yes, they're compacted, but we've been through that. Uh, there are three playoff teams. Boston on Thursday. Uh, Montreal in a couple weeks. And then the New York Rangers uh, on the 30th. Not difficult. Uh, Toronto, New Jersey, Florida, Nashville, Atlanta, Carolina, Ottawa, Toronto. These are teams that the Sabres should be able to beat. I would think that seven or eight, maybe even nine wins has to be the goal coming out of March. Uh, I think if they accomplish that, they'll have uh, between four and eight points on the next team. Uh, probably they'll be in seven. And uh, they're going to need it because April's not easy. Uh, Philadelphia, Carolina, Tampa Bay, uh, I think maybe the Rangers uh, in April. And uh Three of those five games in April are away, so buffer would be good. And finally, I was reading ESPN the magazine a couple weeks ago, reading their Player X column. If you're not familiar with it, they take an anonymous player from certain leagues, and they talk about you know the inner workings of their league. And they had an NFL guy, I think, and he was talking about players that tend to go through the motions in a game for whatever reason, either the score is not close or the team's not good, uh, they're out of the playoffs, they've got five game lead in their division, there's no way how they're missing the playoffs, and he brought up the NHL and he's like, he said the NHL is a league of its own, uh, those guys will kill uh, just to win, even if it's meaningless for your season game, even if it's game three of the year. And, uh, you know, that makes me proud of our league and of our players and of uh, the attitude that we have. Um, as much as I'm a fan of uh, a bubble team, the Sabres, and would like to see the crappy teams laid on and die, uh, I think it's great that you got the Islanders and, and Thrashers playing hard and trying to win games uh, based on no more than personal pride. I think that makes the league better for the fans. I think it makes it better for the players. And uh, it's all around, it's just good to see. Um, that's it. Ran eight minutes, probably. Uh, try to do better on that in the future. I think that I'm just going to end up doing these as the ideas come, so there will likely be little regularity. Uh, you'll just have to be on the lookout for them. Give me block traffic. All right, and I will uh, wave goodnight in vulgar fashion.